<laughs> All right, tonight I want you to turn in your Bibles. And I was sharing along the lines, uh, giving your seed a specific assignment. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to go because I'm going to share something just before I share that, but this is part two of the message. How many of you heard the first part? All right. Oh, so many didn't hear them. You should buy the CD, please. When you miss a, ch when you miss a service, you should go and buy the CD and catch up, play catch up. Because everything we're teaching we are putting vital building blocks into your spiritual house, in your spiritual life. If you miss it, you're going to eventually find that you're going to have, you know, if you look at a wall and a guy that's building a wall, either if he's using bricks or blocks, if he misses vital areas, after he finishes the whole wall, you will find that the wall will be right up, but every now and again you'll find a missing block or a missing brick. And that's how it is with your spiritual life because always when we are teaching and preaching, um, we, we are building on something we've already said. And most people kind of don't understand or they criticize a message because they failed to listen to the previous one uh, because if you have that biblical knowledge and that understanding, that foundation, so to speak, then it's easier to build on that. So every meeting is vital, I tell you. Do you think I just preach because I want to preach? I come here prepared. I have a specific assignment from God to share with the church. I don't just share anything, and I don't just share anyhow. It is vital truth that we communicate to the church so that the church may be edified, church may be built up, church is exhorted. And so that your spiritual life is also strong. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So when you miss a service, I'd like you please to go and get the tape or the CD and catch up. You have to play catch up. Yes. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Imagine at school or at university, you're about to take an important exam. And the lecturers say to you, the lecturers say to you, don't miss now, for the next week or two weeks, I'm going to give you great tips. I bet you won't, you won't miss the, those meetings. Why? It's because you are hoping that while the lecturer is speaking to you, he's going to give you one 10 mark question or 50 mark question and wow, you're going to really fire the paper up. You know what I'm talking about. So you would do that just to pass the exam. What about life? Amen. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, what about life? A whole, your whole spiritual life is an examination. Every time you're studying, every time you're building something in your life, then when a test comes and a trial comes, you're able with all of the information we give you to effectively defeat every circumstance everything that comes against you but if you lack that information I feel sorry for you you are going to go run to your neighbor please pray for me you're going to run to your auntie please pray for me you're gonna run all over not knowing what to do simply because you have missed vital vital spiritual vitamins you understand? Amen. Why do you have to eat well? You eat well because you need all the vital nutrients to Amen. keep your body strong. So when infection or whatever comes, your body is able to fight off that thing. Amen. What about your spiritual life? You need God's Word inside of you. Amen. You need God's Word on the inside so that when any you know, when any trial of life, when every challenge of life comes towards you, boy, I remembered what Pastor said. I remember that word. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance things that you should remember or things that are vital for you to wage a good warfare against the enemy. But here's the question. How would he bring to your remembrance what's not in there? Amen. 
even if it seeped into your mind and heart, but you've forgotten. But the Holy Spirit can quicken it and bring it to the forefront. Whether it's a scripture or whether it's a thought or whether whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will quicken it to you so that you can use it against whatever attacks you. So it's very, very vital. Oh, I can't emphasize it more than that. Tell your neighbor it's very vital. All right, so if you miss that meeting, you ought to go and get that CD and follow all the scriptures that I shared with you. And let it be a basis of your foundation when it comes to wealth creation. Or I'm going to share principles of creating wealth on Saturday. You've got to be there. If you're not there, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? Who helps me preach? Who helps me teach? So when the Holy Spirit arrives here with the message for you, you are not here. You got that one. All right. I want you to turn in your Bible to Isaiah 49 verse 7. And I'm reading from, I'd like someone to lend me a new international version. Are you ready for something big? Yes. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for something very big. Yes. Don't sleep, all right? Okay. You're not going to sleep, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're ready, right? Yes. Say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. Say, speak Holy Spirit. Speak Holy Spirit. I'm, listening. I'm listening. Now, let me read it first from the King James Version. What did I say? Isaiah 49, verse 7. All right. Just listen now, carefully. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has what? He has chosen you. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Then it says, Thus says the Lord, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you. <laughs> I like that. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I will, this is the Lord speaking to you, of course. He says, I will preserve you. Amen. <laughs> it means you cannot go old Amen. or stale. Your shelf life cannot expire. Amen. We call, you know, the different jams, we call it preservatives. Is that what we call it? There's something inside, chemicals inside, that preserves it. In other words, it can stay for a long time. Amen. God says to you, I will preserve you. Amen. Wow. That's enough to shout and go home right there. Amen. I'll preserve you. He says, hmm? he says um, I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people. To restore the earth, I like that. To restore the earth, to cause them to inherit, ah, this is big, this is big. It says here, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages. God will cause you, say me, 
See, he says, I will cause you to inherit the desolate heritages that you may say that you, say me, me. see, he's talking about you. He says that you may say to the prisoners, go forth. <laughs> see, all the prisoners, those that are in darkness, those that are in captivity are waiting for you to say, go forth, you are free. Go forth, you are healed. Go forth, your home is now blessed. <laughs> a man would come to you, a woman would come to you and say, well, please pray for me. My work isn't doing so well or my business is not doing so well. You could stand up and say, go forth now, all is well. Amen. So, to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate places. That means places that are desolate. Places that are not fruitful. Amen. Places where there's darkness or where something else is operating, but not God's spirit. But you are in a position to go and inherit desolate places. Amen. So, no place is too hard. Amen. No people group is too hard. Amen. All right. Um, I'm just waiting for that to fall in, right? I said no place is too hard. No place is too barren. Because God has anointed you to go forth and cause desolate places to become fruitful. Amen. To turn any place that you would see that is dark. Amen. To turn it around. It does not matter what church is there. It does not matter what mosque is there. It does not matter what temple is there. It doesn't matter what worship is going on. Yes. Just go, yes. arrive there, yes. and say, I have arrived. Prophesy and say, desolate places, you will become fruitful yes. at my word. Yes. Ah, ah, listen, listen. I want to emphasize that and then underline it. Yes. You heard what I said? Yes. I want to emphasize that and underline it at my word. All right, sit down a minute. It's getting interesting. We'll see now. So that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourself. They shall feed along the roads and their pastures shall be on all desolate heights they shall neither hunger or thirst. Now, this is so important. Verse 10. Neither heat nor sun shall strike them. Because of you. <laughs> Did you catch that? Amen. That means everybody that's associated with you. <laughs> No sun, no heat will strike them. Amen. Everybody that's attached to you and that receive you. Any area that you will go, no heat. I mean, come on, talk to me. I mean, crime's happening all over, all around. But it can go around you. You understand? So there's no need to be fearful. Because God has anointed you to speak to desolate places and say, Arise, be fruitful. Watch. So neither heat nor sun shall strike them, for he who has mercy on them will lead them. 
Even by the springs of water he will guide them. I will make each of my mountains a road. <laughs> Where there was no road, a road shall be created. At your word. Take note, I didn't say God's word. I said at your word. But you're already a representation of God, right? Amen. And my highways shall be elevated. Surely these shall come from afar. Our sons and daughters. <laughs> they'll drive from far. They'll come from far. You know, I, I, listen, I stand here tonight and I change it. In the realm of the spirit. People run from Durban to Johannesburg to get a job. I reverse it now. You will, you will understand just now, after I share with you some more, you will understand under what authority I said that. That means people from Johannesburg will now come to Durban to get jobs here, to look for positions here, and our churches start, start getting packed. Everyone I talk to, oh, pastor, we're going to Johannesburg. Why? It's better, better prospects there, better money there. I say tonight, no. I reverse it. Now the angels of God will have to just turn everything around, start bringing people down. So start getting ready in the next 12 months. Start getting ready. People are going to start. Well, they may go and do business in Johannesburg, but they will live here and they will return here. Yes. Amen. Why we are saying, and that is true, Johannesburg is the economic hub, you know, in South Africa. Well, Durban's catching up. Yes. We'll change it. The money will start to flow in Durban. Yes. Businesses will flourish all yes. around us. People will prosper. Why? Why? Because we are here. Yes. Well, I'm speaking to maybe a place that, you know, is desolate. And I say, be fruitful. Yes. I say, multiply. Yes. I say, we change it in the realm of the... You understand now? Yes. All right, let's go ahead. It says, surely these shall come from afar. Yes, Cape Town, people will come here. Yes. Johannesburg, people will come here. Yes. From everywhere, they will come. People will come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west. And these from the land of Sinem. Sing, O heavens. Be joyful, O earth. And break out in singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy, <laughs> will have mercy on his afflicted. Amen. So God was dealing with me this afternoon about just a few thoughts that I want to share with you. And I thought I'll just add it into the message of giving you seed and assignment. What we won't finish tonight, we'll finish on Sunday, right? Now, You've got to understand that you are very special. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. You've got to understand that you are very special in the sense that God has handpicked you yes. and chosen you out of the world. Amen. And now he's brought you into the kingdom of light. The Bible is very specific and I don't have time to share all of that. But you are ambassadors of Christ. Yes. So you are a representation of heaven on earth. Can I repeat what I just said? I said you are a representation of heaven on earth. That means your words carry power. Yes. Every word, every prayer, everything that you will utter while you are praying carries power. When you are speaking in tongues, you are shifting things around. Oh boy. Actually, the right word to use there, when you are praying in tongues and praying in the Spirit, you are rearranging things. 
what was going away that's supposed to come will now start to come. Amen. You rearrange things. Yes, sir. Oh, come on here. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Yes, sir. That's the kind of power a child of God carries. Yes. So don't feel shy. Don't make any apologies for who you are and what you are. You understand that? Yes. You don't have to walk around and apologize to relatives. You don't have to walk around and apologize to your neighbor. You are what you are because of what God made you. Yes. I mean, He created you in the image and likeness of God. So chin up, chest out, and walk like you own the place. Yes. Don't have a beggar's posture. You can have a posture, but don't let it be a biggest posture. Walk around like a king. Amen. Speak like a king. Make declarations like a king. Amen. Prophesy like a king. Amen. Listen, listen. You know, you cannot take a small butter knife and try to hack down an oak tree. So if you carry yourself like an oak tree, they can come with a thousand butter knives. Brother, they will... They will try to cut you down from now to the kingdom comes. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. You understand? You are too big for them to bring you down. You understand? That's why when people say, you know, say things, don't give attention. Oh, what, you, did you hear what they said? Who's they? It's like one little cockroach comes into your home. Can it frighten you? One little gecko comes into your home. Can it frighten you? No. One little mosquito comes zzz all over. Are you going to leave your home and run away? Well, that's what we do in the natural. You, 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 you understand the implication? One relative said something about you. Now you're depressed for two months. Somebody said at work they don't like you. Now you are, you're taking comets. <laughs> I don't know if they still have the comets. I saw them advertising that on TV. You are bigger than that. Yes. You are bigger than that. You are bigger than people's opinions. Amen. You are bigger than their stories. Yes. And some people just love stories. Yes. Boy, they have big no. flappy ears. In the spirit, some people have elephant's ears. You know, I'm telling you. No, no, it's fine. You know, when I say an elephant ear, you know. If you have to, if, 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 if you, if you have to really, <laughs> if you really have to, you know, if God would open your eye and you could see them in the spirit, you'll see a man my size maybe, but this is his ear. Now there's two of them, remember, one on either side. But the ears are not open for good news. The ears are not open to the word of God. You share something, but they'll still go and check it out. Not because they don't believe you. They just love stories. Give me more. Then after a while, they're depressed. Then their faith wanes. And then you ask them, brother, what happened? Oh, pastor, I'm very discouraged. What happened? You've been listening to the wrong thing. You are not a garbage can. You're God's beautiful people. You understand? Come on, talk to me. You're too special. You're not anyone's refuse dump. Be careful what goes in there. You have an eye gate. Be careful what you see. You have a mouth gate, but be careful what you say. You have a ear gate, be careful what you hear. Because everything you're seeing, you're hearing, and you're speaking is eventually getting into your heart. Then the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That means when words, negative words went in, when you are starting to speak now, what comes out? Death. Amen. Spirit of death. You say, well, I'll pray to the Lord. I'll make supplications. Death. In the name of Jesus, death. No light. Why? Inside is full of darkness. Refuse to be that way. When your light is turned, out, turned on, keep it on. You understand? 
this this whole row just come here quickly including you all come come uh, just give me some catches just come all of you here just come quickly when the light is inside on when it's on it's shining keep it bright I don't know if you hear what I'm saying I said keep it bright you hear what I'm saying I said, keep your light bright tell your neighbor keep your light bright they keep shining. keep shining. Say, God is with you. God is with you. Okay, watch, watch. I'm not praying. I'm just walking and I look. Watch the power of God. Watch. Why? I'm carrying something. It's the glory of God on the inside. You understand? Don't leak the anointing. Don't leak the power of God. Don't... <laughs> Don't just go on and talk and talk and talk and talk. No, get the word of God inside of you. Then the light will shine. The power of God will be inside of you. That means when your neighbor is sick, go and pray. In the name of Jesus, something will happen. If some relative's in trouble, in the name of Jesus, something will happen. Come on here. Are you listening? If there's a financial crisis and you look at it in the face and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you out, out of my way. You will not dominate me. You will not intimidate me. I'm too big. Say, I'm big. Say, I'm too big. All right. Give the Lord a great hand. Hallelujah. Now, let me read. Just keep on listening to me. Let me read Isaiah 49 and the NIV. It says, verse 7. It says, this is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see you, will see and bow down. Ah, yeah. Underline that in your Bible. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Not all of you heard me, right? What verse are we reading? Verse number? Seven. Would you read? Okay, let's read with me, all right? This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see and bow down. Underline that in your Bible. Princes will see and bow down. I mean, they will just see and, and, and bow down. Princes will see. Underline that. Keep a mental note of that. We'll touch on that just now. Are you catching that? Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful. All right. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Whose Bible is this? Thank you. Ephesians chapter 6. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say this is big. This is big. I've got to catch it. Got to catch it. Amen. I'm kind of going, going slow because I want you to, to catch this. Let's just go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Well-known verse of scripture, you all know it. I'm sure most of you can quote it. When I was, um, you know, just spending time with the Lord today, and he shared that with me, I said, but Lord, I know these scriptures. I'm in Ephesians 2, verse 2, Revelation, Isaiah, Ephesians 6, I know these scriptures. He says, but I'll show you something. Listen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he goes on in verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. Then verse 12 says, he says, we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. Now this is important. It says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Say principalities. That's where we get the word prince from, right? That's what we read in Isaiah. 
What does it say? Princes shall bow down. You got that? But now here in Ephesians 6, it tells us we are not wrestling against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Then he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And after having done all, stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now the thing that I want to highlight to you is that for we do not wrestle against flesh. So your wrestling or your combat is not with flesh and blood. It's not with people. It's not with people that go crazy. What a silly question sometimes. I think I need to throw this in. People all the time, people go crazy. You know, Pastor, what's wrong with so and so? Why are they gone crazy? Well, have you not heard about the story of Peter? Jesus said to Peter, Satan, get thee behind me. What entered Peter? Who was speaking out of Peter? Come talk to me. Who was speaking out of Peter? Come on, talk to me. Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. So that means the words that was uttered out of Peter's mouth came from who? Who was the source? Satan. So sometimes people talk and we just listen. You, did you ask yourself, what is the source? Is it satanic? Is it promoting peace? Is it speaking the truth? Is it done in love according to Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit? Come on now, talk to me. You ought to, as a Christian, ask yourself, I, I, recently I was challenged with something big nothing in our church outside and um, someone had called brought a bad report to me about somebody else and then the Lord spoke to my heart and said to me this man that's speaking against this other man that's not done in a spirit of love it's done in a spirit of dissension and strife and even if those things that he was saying is true, it's not our business. God is big enough to take care. Amen. Come on here now. Amen. Is he not big enough? Yes. So what do you want to hear? Why do you want to go and listen? Inquisitive you. It's not somebody else's fault. It's you. You got, you got something in you that's attracting that negativity. Deal with it before it kills you. How about saying, it's not my business. Whether that man's wrong or that man's right, God will deal with it. If he's under your sphere of influence and you are a spiritual leader, you can speak to that if he will allow you or she will allow you to speak to that. Do you understand? Just as quick as the Spirit of God can speak through someone, Satan can also talk. You taste it. Is this generating strife? Is it bringing unholy thoughts? Is it bringing dissension, heresies? Is it bringing confusion, disorder? Then if it is, then that is not of God. Amen. Period. Amen? All right, now turn to Ephesians 2, verse 2. I'm teaching tonight, all right? Amen? Amen? You're receiving something. Okay, this is a big one now. Ephesians 2, verse 2. He says, okay, let's read from verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. You got that? And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins 
in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to what? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. All right. In Isaiah, we read, the scripture that I read, in Isaiah it says what? Princes will bow. Yes. To whom? To the sons of God. So princes will bow to you. In Ephesians chapter 6, we are dealing with, the Bible says we wrestle not, now don't, tell your neighbor don't sleep now. Don't sleep now. Okay. In Ephesians 6, it says we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers. Huh? So I said to you, that word prince in Isaiah comes actually from that word principalities, speaking about the same thing. Then Ephesians 2 verse 2, what does it say? Re quote, quote that scripture for me, Ephesians 2 verse 2. All right, we need music practice so we can sing together. <laughs> Let's read again from verse 1. One, two, three, go. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now watch, this is what the word of God is saying. It says that you once, that means prior to your conversion, prior to you becoming a Christian. It says, you once, what? You walked according to the prince of the power of the air. That means this prince, the devil, the wicked one, Lucifer, call him what you want to do. He's in charge of the air. He is what? He is the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So according to this scripture, who is the prince of the air? Who is the prince of the air? Uh, I want to hear that again. Who is the prince of the air? Satan. Yeah, you're answering softly because you think it's a trick question. <laughs> So we know that scripture well. And so watch what we do now. Because he's the prince of the power of the air. So we take that scripture now and we say, all right, we have to fight him all the time. Because he's ruling. The Lord showed me something. This is powerful. If you've got socks, it will fly off now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to change your whole outlook now. Turn to Revelation. Chapter 1. I think it's Revelation 1. Speak that for me. Oh. Let's just leave it in the pulpit. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you awake? Yes. Let's read from verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. That's you. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. I know that you didn't catch it. I know you didn't catch it. I set you up, but you didn't catch it. Look, 
Come stand here, Nathan. Stand here. See, the Bible, turn around to them. The Bible says, this is big. Uh-huh. Take your academic classes out. <laughs> Take your theology classes out. Take your religious classes out Amen. and start to see with your heart. In the book of Isaiah, it says, princes will bow. Yes. Amen. Jumping into the New Testament, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Ephesians 2.2 2 says, for he, the devil, is the prince of the power of the air. Revelation 1 tells us, God has made us kings. Watch, watch. Turn around. This is the prince of the power of the air. Positionally, as a believer, I'm a king. Amen. Amen. Now you're getting it. Yes, sir. Amen. So Isaiah tells us the prince must bow. Go on your knees, Nathan. To whom? To whom? To whom? It does not say that he has made us a prince. If he told us he made us prince, then that means we are equals. In the realm of the spirit and in terms of authority, then I'm an, I'm an equal. But if I'm a king... And he's a prince. You got that? Because a king commands a prince. A king trains a prince. A king tells him, go and come. <laughs> you got it. Um, you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. You did not catch it. Some of you are looking at me like a cow at a new gate. I'm telling you. You didn't catch what I said. Sit down. Ayah. <laughs> what can God do with you to help you? Say, open my eyes, Lord. Leave your notebook alone. Leave your Bible alone. Catch what I'm saying. Here the Bible talks about a prince, the prince of the air, the devil. He's, he's, he's taken charge all around. But God has made you a king and a priest. He's put you in charge of this one. You got it now. All right. You go to Phoenix. Who is in charge there? According to the scriptures I gave you. Go to Amshlanga. Who is in charge there? Who's in charge around here? <laughs> now I'm talking according to Ephesians. The prince of the power of the air, the devil's in charge. Well, he's in charge so long as there's no king there. He's actually in charge. He's actually in charge even if there's a king there who does not know his rights. Privileges. You got that. That's fine. So I go to Phoenix as a pastor. Mm. Watch, 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 watch. Oh, this is big. This is big. All this thing about demonology now is just being cancelled. I go to Phoenix as a pastor. This guy's ruling. I go there and I say, 
from today I dethrone you. For in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, you will not rule here any longer. I decommission you. I strip you of all authority. From today, I am in charge. Now, if evil spirits are instruments of unrighteousness, then the servants of God are instruments of righteousness. You understand? You can go to any area and dominate and take control. I, uh, some of you are thinking, what does pastor say? Did you catch what I said? As I was reading the scriptures today and the Lord dropped into my spirit, I stood up in my office. I said, in the name of Jesus, Greenwood Park, Red Hill, Durban North, Amshlanga, all around, it's mine! So if I'm ruling now, the Hindus must come to the knowledge of God. The Muslims must come to the knowledge of God. The drunkards and the drug addicts must come to the knowledge of God. You say to me, but pastor, uh, is, is, that, is, that, is that true? Well, I just showed you from the scripture. You have control over this guy. Not this guy. The, you know what I'm talking about as an illustration. You have that power. But if you don't know how to exercise that power, you're in deep trouble. So any place you set your feet in, you can stand up, Nathan. Nathan, it's okay, thank you. Any place you put your feet, the land is yours. You can claim the territory, you can take the territory, you can, you know, you can exercise control. Now, in other words, in the, in, in, in the realm of the spirit now, Think about this. In the realm of the Spirit, as you are speaking, praying and prophesying and, uh, you know, making warfare with the prophecy God had given you, you're taking scriptures and you're prophesying and you're speaking. You're controlling that whole environment. You understand? That whole area comes under your control. Ah! When I saw that today, I said, Lord, now... I'm not, I'm not against other men of God or other churches or whatever. They, I mean, they're operating in the revelation they have and praise God for that. But I stood up today and I said, in this area, Amen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, now we, we cannot but just get bigger. Amen. We are going to stretch to the left, yes. right, upwards, forward, yes. sideways and grow. Oh. You, you understand? Amen. Oh. Amen. Are you scared of devils now? No. You are his ruler. Yes. <laughs> now he may fight you. He may resist you a little bit. But every time there's tyranny in a country, what does a king do? He just sends the troops out and dominates yes. Hmm? If there's a right in the land, what does the authorities do? They just send out the right police, they just send out the army, and they subdue that whole thing. Yes. That's what you would do. Amen. In the realm of the spirit, that's what you will do. So whatever God has given you, you will dominate. Amen. Whatever God has given you, whatever territory you have, yes. you will rule over it. Now you cannot remain, I said to you, despise not small beginnings, for though your beginning is small, yet the later end shall greatly increase. Now it's okay that you started small, don't stay small long. Amen. Because now you rule that territory. Yes. See, I'm stronger as ours. Amen. I'm telling you. That's ours. 
Now, you may say to me, but pastor, there are so many churches. They praise God for the other churches. Praise God for the men of God. But God has given us an assignment to go there because there are people out there that are looking for us. God has prearranged them for us. There are people in Phoenix, God has prearranged for you. There are people in Malazi, God has prearranged for you. There are people in Kormashu and Tuzuma, God has prearranged there. You understand? Yes. That's true. Now, I want you to turn around to someone and say, Congratulations, you're so big. Some of you are wondering what happened. <laughs> some of you caught it, some of you are wondering what happened. You're big, brother. You're big. You are big. You're large in charge. When I caught that in my spirit this afternoon, I said, Aya. I feel sorry for the devil. Now, another religious thing must intimidate me uh -uh. no I don't listen I don't have to fast against it now we fasted today right but I don't have to fast against it I don't have to do this I don't have to do I just walk and say bow <laughs> you understand now there are listen there are there are levels of authority there's a couple of things we have learned. There's a couple of things I've learned. Amen. Before I used to cry for money. Not now. Yes. Amen. What are you talking about? Amen. What are you talking about? Some of you are crying for money. And that's okay. Just develop from there. Grow up from there. Go to the next grade. Some of you, you know, you're battling with different kinds of sickness. It's okay. Just develop. Amen. Don't stay there. It's okay to start there. Don't stay there. Yes. Just develop. Amen. Some of you are scared to use the name of Jesus. But now leave that level. Go to the next level. Amen. Some of you are in lack and poverty. You know, leave that level. That's not for you. Amen. That's for someone else. Yes. And then when you move to the next level and then someone else takes the old place, yes. then you teach him the word. Yes. Get him out from there. Amen. You understand? Amen. Uh -huh. That is your assignment in life. To be big and in charge. So who is in charge of the prince of the power of the air? And that is the man down the road, right? They are the people out the church, right? They are the angels, right? That's you. Uh -huh. That's you. That's you. So no situation in life can bring you down. No situation in life can take you down. No, you are big. I said you are big. Very big. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh boy, you are going to grow. <laughs> you are going to grow financially. You are going to grow spiritually. You are, listen. The Lord gives me a word for me and for the church. Numerical struggle, you know, the struggle for numerical growth has now ended. Now ended. In the realm of the spirit, I cancel struggling and I declare phenomenal church growth like we have never seen before. Hallelujah. There will be queues outside. Not only here, but in all our churches. Queues outside. No parking for the cars. It's just going to grow and grow. Financial explosion. No more struggling. No more, I, said, I said no more struggling. We're just going to grow and grow and grow. <laughs> No more fighting, no more binding. Amen. Just taking charge. Yes. 
Aya. <laughs> I got something in my spirit. Listen, I, I, I don't know about you, but I preach myself happy. I'm going away from here tonight. Something is in my spirit. I'm telling you, there's something in my spirit. Hallelujah. What are you talking about? You're going to grow now. I said you're going to grow now. Numerically, financially, every area of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why do you think, let me ask you a question as I close. Why do you think Satan does not like a church like ours? Does not like a spiritual church? Doesn't like those that are going and taking territory. So what he does, he whispers to the soldiers and he brings confusion down the ranks. Refuse to look down. Keep on looking forward. Just keep on going forward. Hallelujah. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Don't busy yourself with trivialities. You are too big. Kings strategize. Mm. If, if I sent you to an area, whatever area it is, you know, whether it's Phoenix, whether it's Amlazi, whether it's what, whatever area it is, if I sent you to that area, now you just take charge. As you drive home tonight, and whether you're a cell group leader, or whether you're a pastor, as you drive to your territory tonight, make a solemn declaration. You will say this, listen, God gave me this revelation today. I jumped, I shouted, I, I cannot stop speaking this thing. You understand? Every day I'll get up now, I'll say, boy, this area is mine. I actually stood up in my office this afternoon praying. I said, Durban. <laughs> and then I said, KZN. You're mine, you're mine, you're mine. Kwamashu, into Zuma, you're mine. Phoenix, you're mine. Richards Bay, you are mine. Huh? Berea, you are mine. Amlazi, you are mine. Chatsworth, you are mine. Pine Town, you are mine. Newlands West, you are mine. Newlands East, you are mine. Durban North, you are mine. Amschlanga, you are mine. Hallelujah. You got it. You got it. Did it drop in your spirit? Yes. Did you catch a hold of this word? Oh boy. You're ready now. You are just sharp. You're ready. You know what to do. If you put your foot in a campus, it's your whole campus is yours. If you put your foot in a college, that college is yours. If you put your foot in a school, that school is yours. If you go into a company, that company is yours. Hallelujah. I always thought this dude is in charge. So we have to fast and pray and bind. That's what I was thinking, you know. But today I know otherwise. See, we're all growing. We're growing in revelation. Revelation is progressive. Hallelujah. Now, for if, you, if, you, if you want him to be in charge of you, that's okay with me. But I want to be in charge of him. Amen. You understand? Yes. I want you as leaders to be in charge of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you are in charge. Yes. You are the CEO. Yes. You understand? Yes. He will take commands from you. Yes. Hallelujah. Pray in other tongues now. Just pray. Let that revelation fall into your spirit. Let it drop into your spirit. Hallelujah. Are these for prayers? These for praying? Bring that, these contracts. Go ahead, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. What is this? What is, what is Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray over these letters. I pray over, oh God, these... Um, CVs, these letters in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands upon it, I declare freedom, I declare Lord liberty, 
I declare, Lord, goodness and favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Libraria Sakaba Tula Mamprada Kaba Sakata. Larira Shanama Sukobo Takabata. Hold it, lady here. Lead the Laba Sukobo Shakaba Talaman Taka Day. Lead Aliba Sukobo Takaba Sa. What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? Kasaka Mantola Ba Shakaba Laba Sakata. How long you had it? What did the doctor say? You want to go? No, I'm not She's scheduled for an op tomorrow. And uh, I asked her, Do you want to go for the op? She says, No. Well, look at me. In the name of Jesus. You are now healed. You are healed. You are healed. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You had pain when you came to me? Did you have pain? Yes. It's gone now. What? It's gone. She can't believe it's gone. It's gone. Yes, it's gone. No pain. No, there's no pain there. <laughs> Cancel your operation. Who's your family? What's your name? And and that is my husband. Where's your husband? Okay. See you, spirit of infirmity and sickness, out of this body, in the name of Jesus, out, out. She's completely healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you are healing the sick, a king. You are healed. <laughs> She's a shy. <laughs> you are healed. You don't, you don't have to go tomorrow. No, I'm not going to go tomorrow. By the morning, everything will dissolve. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There you are. It's your letter. So, when you are praying for the sick, yeah. when you are praying for the sick, when the king arrives, a prince must bow. Amen. A prince that causes an infirmity, causes a sickness, Amen. must bow. Yes. That's why sometimes it's not even necessary to say a word. 
You want me to teach you something? Amen. You're not tired to go home. No. Who else here has got some pain in their body, physical pain right now? You got pain. I see a hand there. I see a hand there. All right, come. That gentleman, come. Where have you got the pain? In your jaw. In your right ear. What's wrong with it? How long, how, how long were you suffering with that? A long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Come here. Well, stand there. Stand there. Just look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you now? Strongly believe in him. You are healed. Get up. Pain's gone. Test yourself. Test yourself. I'm okay. <laughs> He's healed. <laughs> how, how long did you have it? It's been more than five years. More than five years. So did you go to a doctor? Yeah, that was operated and then it was... Now, can you hear properly? Can you hear? Yeah. Block your good, block that here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just yeah. But you cannot catch what is. In other words, he was saying in that year after the operation, he suffered with five years. He said he could hear, but very faintly distorted. He couldn't hear properly. Now it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> All right. Here's a question. Here's a question. Did I pray? No. Did I command? No. Did I shout? No. What did I do? Who brought that infirmity on him? So when I looked at him in his eyes, I'm not saying he's a devil. <laughs> He's not a devil, he's a child of God. But the thing that brought the infirmity, so when I looked at him, that thing, not you, that thing. He saw authority, he says, yes, sir. <laughs> See? And so one of us had to go. You got that? One of us had to go. I obviously am not going anywhere. So who must go? That thing is a prince. I'm a king. So it must go. So you learn something tonight. There's sometimes you, know, you have to say, in the name of Jesus. So you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. The Spirit will tell you what to do. When I was praying for that woman there, as I was praying for her, the Lord said to me, take three steps backward. So I took three steps backward. Don't ask me why. I can't explain it. But as soon as I took the steps backward, what happened? She started to manifest. She started, the Spirit of God started to take control and then she yeah. fell. So you've got to be obedient to the voice of the Spirit. Is it good to be healed? Hey. Five years. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Not, not, not five days, five years. Yeah. I was, I now was you about can, to go to for an operation again. Were you going to go for an operation? Yeah, but... I was, Listen to that.
I'm not saying, listen to me, I'm not saying there's anything wrong in studying. I study myself. I read a lot, I study a lot. I read my Bible a lot. But before I was acquiring knowledge, I was thirsty for it. And I was trying to touch God through human intellect and wisdom. And I failed. Then I had to go back and God taught me now that is all good but you have to walk the steps of the spiritual man. Walk the steps of in the spiritual man. There was one time a lady was so demon possessed and a Hindu. All I did was I went in front of her and I looked like that. I didn't say a word. I just looked like that. In 30 seconds flat she fell down to the floor. All those things came out. She wriggled and turned and did all this. And then she said, Oh, Jesus. A Hindu woman with a string on. She said, Oh, Jesus. She stood up. She took the string out. And she said, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is... I did not even lead her to the Lord. It was just that authority. When the devils left, she recognized Jesus. She saw the light of God. Something told her, Christ is God. You see? A king walks with that type of authority. Uh -huh. A king does not beg for money. Thank you. I was talking about giving your seed an assignment. Say, I refuse from today to beg. What are you talking about? A beggar? No. Suffering? No. Lack? No. Poverty? No. Dominated. Yes. Don't pray for money. Just get up in the morning and say, I'm blessed. Boy, money comes to me. That's my prayer. Amen. That's my confession. In the morning. Money comes to me from the east, west, north and south. Contracts come to me. If you're a businessman or businesswoman, contracts come to me. It will be flying somewhere. It will turn. Come to me. You understand? Let me tell you what I've done tonight. Tonight, I, uh, listen, just because of what I said tonight. The angels here have quadrupled all over. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There are more angels in this area now. You know why? Because for the first time today, not that I didn't know, but a new revelation came into my heart. I said, Lord, thank you for that. I knew those scriptures, but you showed me something else. So every time we move now, we are moving with more angels, more power, more authority. Hallelujah. You understand? Where's all the cell leaders? Come here quickly. If you're a cell leader, if you're a cell leader and involved in ministry, come. Come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So from tonight, your authority is going to double, treble, quadruple there'll be a mighty anointing upon you to cast out devils heal the sick and for growth everything about you grows now everything 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 grows 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 in the name of jesus hallelujah everything about you grows everything about you multiplies You'll stand up with power. You'll get up in the morning with power. You'll walk with power. In the name of Jesus. I transfer that to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wentworth will grow. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, favor and went with. You'll grow and went with. Hallelujah.
in the name of Jesus. Kasuka bataka bataya. Lendo krabi oshula masaka bantola bradeke le besikete. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Receive something while you are standing there. Lift up your hands, receive it. It's in the air. Hallelujah. Kasuka bara bataka bate. Lido no vo shaka bala manto saka bataya. Likro do si frande beli bara da saka bataya. Likari da sundo lo vo shaka bate le manta zata. Livro do si bala manto saka bala manta kabasaya. Likari da sungo prudu shamala manta kasaya. Hallelujah. Kalimando sa prudu shamata. Lido lo vo si bara da saka bataya. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Kusaka batala manta kabasha. Lero roro bo saka batela mando saka la mantaya. Kira bi asuko boro bo saka batala manta kasa. Kariba suno ro monta kabatela manta saka ta. You know what I'm prophesying? I'm just prophesying growth and increase. Explosion, the Mim Shack anointing for increase, for growth. Come on, say that. For so increase, for growth, for expansion. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, it's mine. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kalama Sukobotai. To the business people that are standing here, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, all the businessmen and all the businesswomen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, explosion in your business, increase in your business. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. Hallelujah. Kasaka batalamata. Remember, I thought this just came to my mind. I shared briefly on Sunday. I said, you know, the brook dried up. Then Elijah had to move. As soon as you get comfortable. Your brook dries up. Don't ever get comfortable. In the things of God, don't get comfortable. Always be hungry. Always be pursuing the things of God. You know, you remember what David said? As a deer panted after the water, so is my soul panted after thee. So he was hungry for God, searching for God, hungry for God. Be hungry. Tell your neighbor, be hungry. As you are hungry for God, God will increase. God will increase. He'll refresh you, refresh you. Hallelujah. So as I close the service today, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bless your home. I bless your family. I bless your finances. I bless your health. I bless all the things that are around you in the mighty name of Jesus. Gladness is your portion. Happiness is your portion. The joy of the Lord is your portion. The strength of the Lord is your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Thank you, Lord. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Thank you, Lord.